start with that um, proposed ordinance that we had talked about last time and maybe just trying to like get through it pretty quickly. Um, because we can always, and Stefan was asked, he asked me this by email and I was going to go over it anyway today, but we can always revisit things like um, as we go on to another meeting. So if, if you get a chance to like go back and revisit something, you know, I started that document that is called Article One Edited that contains all of our decisions so far. Um, and it has any new language we added bolded and I think maybe italicized, but at least bolded. And then struck, and then I struck through anything we deleted. So you can see our progress and, you know, at the next meeting, I mean, I think it'd be helpful if you let me know you want to discuss something and I can specifically put it on the agenda, but we do have a catch-all that just says additional comments. So if you don't, then we can always hit it there. But um, because we spent a lot of time on the smoking ordinances and we have a lot more to go. So I think uh, it'd be great to move through this one. And at the end, I was gonna talk about process again, cause I know some questions came up um, via email. Um, and thank you, Kevin, you are correct. Like, uh, even though it's hard, we cannot discuss via email cause we're subject to sunshine law. Um, so, all right, let's dive into this. I prepared this, I looked at the, um, Clayton had, this ordinance and Brent would have this ordinance. And then they all seem to be based on the county. There are state statutes. They're a lot uh, more limited. They're not as expansive. Um, but I also was taking what we talked about last time. I left out any penalty on any person who was doing the actual smoking and only put in the provision regarding a, like the owner or someone who controls the space. Um, and so uh, starting off the top, did anyone have any questions or comments they wanted to, to put out there? About no, it? I think generally I was fine with the kind of tracking the, it looked like it tracked the county pretty closely. And okay. then just kind of uh, fines were, were uh, lower. I was fine with that. My, at the two ones and lighted one, G and then there might be another um, with respect to there was bowling alleys. Also, one of the prohibitions is in like a place of entertainment or recreation, okay. which would probably cover uh, Saratoga. And then there's also that, I think it's still open, that uh, billiard or pool hall yes. uh, right where Porter's is. And I've never been in there. I don't know if it's smoking or not. Um, so the those were kind of the those were the two because there's the the carve out for the grandfathered bars, um, you know. But I didn't. I I I think Saratoga might still be smoking, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and I was going to ask, how do we? I guess Sarah, do you know via your old experience with the public health department? <laughs> Do they contain a list or would the city have that list? Do you know, would you like, I was going to reach out to the city to see like which businesses are, yeah. but I thought that's more of a county thing. Maybe. I would be surprised if the county had a current list since it's been like a so many years plus. Yeah. Right. And so. Um, it looks like you have to go through the state to get that exemption okay. from what I could read. So maybe I'll do some research, but I agree. There are places in Maplewood that allow smoking still. And I didn't want to, and if, if they've gone through that process, they're allowed to do it. I wasn't trying to make them non-smoking here. So I agree, Kevin, like that was one of my concerns. Sheila, do you know, do they still allow smoking? At, do you know if they allow smoking at Saratoga still? I think so. I think Saratoga and Foley's might be. And then McLean's, I think. The McLean's, maybe. yeah. And you're right about that pool hall. I didn't think about that. Um, okay, so I'll I'll do some research into that. Uh, and see I, th I thought it was by county. Like St. Louis City has their own process for that. I could be wrong. Um, I, the only reason I thought, and I don't know if I put it in here. Let me look. Uh, 
I saw something in one of the ordinances and it might've been the counties that said, if you want to, you know, keep this exception, you have to file with the department of, and it was a state department. Um, I, but you're right. Like the county determines the ordinance and they've not, they've, they've allowed those people to be grandfathered. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll research that and find that. Um, and I think when, you know, like I said, I think it's important to include the chamber of commerce when we're talking about businesses and things like that. And that, that probably comes later with the process, like how do we get input, but yeah. I'm sure that they have, um, maybe more information or expertise in that than. Yes, I, I agree. And I, I agree with you. We will talk about that in process, but yes, I, I think we will probably, we would give them an opportunity to talk about all of our ordinance changes in case, you know, there's anything, but they're already, you know, you're right, given that they're already sort of subject to this from the county, they may have some thoughts about it that we're not thinking of. So um, yes, I agree, Sheila, that would be helpful. Um, all right, so I will research that. And then we're all in agreement that we want to allow those people to stay grandfathered, correct? So like we're not trying to take that away. So I will then update the document accordingly when I get that answer and let you guys know. Um, my other question was, you know, I mean, and it doesn't hurt to keep it in. We just, I don't think we have a cigar bar, but um, do you wanna just keep it in in case or do you wanna take it out? Just keep it in in case. Okay, that was my thought too. Um, and then I did, let me know your guys' thoughts. The definition of smoking, they had it like lighted, heated cigar, cigarette, whatever, but we've just modified all those definitions in the other section to cover all smoking materials. So I just referred to those definitions. I was gonna ask the city attorney if we need to specifically reference those definitions or you know what I'm saying? If like, I have to say as defined in or if we can just list them and that definition will apply. I think they're gonna be in the same article so we'd probably be okay, but um, are you good with using our updated defined terms instead of whatever they had? Okay, no one sees a problem with that, all right. Um, and then I had found, so then I went in where I noted bowling alleys, I had found some language in U cities that said, because they, they have a bowling alley that must allow smoking. And because it said a business established, like they accepted out a business establishment whose primary purpose is to operate a bowling alley to the public. So we can put that language in if Saratoga still smoke uh, allows smoking. Um, in, in the prohibition section, I had a question. Um, it's on, it's in subsection C. Um, I just always think it's funny when they define stuff, but then don't use it. It says any indoor space place, but they've defined, used the defined term enclosed. So I didn't know if it made sense. Like they've defined enclosed in the definition and what it means to be enclosed, which is usually indoors, correct? Would you, but then they didn't, but, but then they use any indoor space instead of any in enclosed place. So my thought was to update that to enclosed. So we're using the definition that we just that does that make sense or yeah. I think that's a good catch. Yeah. All right. Um, you see that frequently where yeah. you use the definition, <laughs> have a definition and then don't use it. Use another word. Yep. Um all right. And then uh one thing I noticed too in that same one, you know, it says uh, enclosed and it has swimming pools, but I assume like we're talking about indoor spaces here really only in this um, that like the pool can on its own just say we don't allow any smoking at the outdoor swimming pool, right? Yeah. Um... Yes. Yeah, that's just kind of weird to me about some of that stuff. Huh, yeah, no, that is weird. Um, but wouldn't that be considered city property? Oh, you're right, Sheila, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think this is any city property, right? Not just indoors or maybe not. Yeah. Well, no, it's enclosed. That, it is, so it is so building. That section, yeah, so that section is exclusively enclosed slash indoor places, but yeah. the like section B above for definitions, um, it has a section on you know public place, which you might be able to consider the pool a public place, I would think. Like I know you have to have a membership to enter, but like it's city property and city operated. Uh, so I think it would be covered as part of that. Except it says enclosed area and enclosed is defined as. Yeah. So, you know what, I may research that. We, you know, it's not, so I'm not, I don't think the pool, I don't know if it's, I'm trying to think to my other committee with parks, if that's considered a park or not. And we were talking about adding in, you know, prohibition against smoking and that. So let me research yeah, I think that. it would be part of the park. Yeah. It's, it's part of the, um, you know, like the Maplewood Richmond Heights yeah uh p-a-r-c so i think it i that I, I think it would fall within that and they may be able, and we're we're creating like a policy manual for that instead of having so many ordinances that you're never going to give someone a ticket for we're going to put it in like a policy manual and i bet that could just also be a policy thing where they just say we don't allow smoking in here um okay so I'll, i'm going to check into that and just make sure we've got it covered because i was just thinking about that like i'm like that's just kind of weird um and then where are we in that one so you make a good point. I had noted that in the Brentwood one, they had also included billiard halls, bowling alleys, health spas, roller and ice skating rinks. We have a question out about, we know bowling alleys and billiard halls, we, we uh, wouldn't add if they allow smoking in those in Maplewood. Um, I mean, I don't know if you have to add those other two since it says any enclosed space. Um, do you want me to add them or just leave it how it is? The, the last two, health spas and roller and ice skating rinks, which we don't, we only have outdoor roller and ice, well, no ice skating rink. We have an outdoor roller rink. Just leave it. I mean, it yeah. says any, I, I mean, okay. Well, and that section two says including but not limited to. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like, I just, I just wanna, I wanna make sure um, all right, and then going down in that section in L, again, since we're talking about indoor, it said all indoor public areas and waiting rooms of public transportation facilities. So I thought this was interesting. Brentwood doesn't say indoor. And I was thinking about like, you know, the Metrolink or, you know, when you're waiting for the Metrolink, but I assume they have their own prohibitions. So we don't really need to worry about that. Okay. Um, and I had one on just with respect to J okay. in, in the same section where it says restaurants and bars, including lounge areas, except outdoor dining areas. And I don't know if there should be language like except outdoor dining or other designated areas or something or, like or that. Or other designated areas. That's because fine. some places will, might just have a, you know, a spot with a a cigarette yeah. disposal yeah. like area with a couple of chairs where people aren't going to be eating there but they can go out there and smoke yeah that's a good point i, I will think we just that. have to be clear that the designated areas are then outside because you couldn't like designate a corner inside your restaurant. I'll, I'll put outdoor <laughs> again yeah I'll other out yeah other or yeah. or other outdoor designated areas or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. all right You want me to say outside areas designated for smoking or just outside designated areas? I think that's a distinction without a difference in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. You did say, did you say designated or just outside areas? Sorry. Just, or other outside areas? I think we said designated. Um, okay. put it in, we can always change. All right, okay. So I think my, no, not my last question. Um, in, 
in D. So, and this is, I'm getting pretty specific here. So it says a person who owns, manages, operates, or otherwise controls a place listed. And Clayton in the county just said in this like chapter or section, so the whole thing. I think Brad would said like listed the specific thing, which is this, the, the section above where you allow smoking. And so I was, I put in the specific section where we listed all the places you can smoke, but then I started to be like, oh, I hope, you know, I'm not missing anything then. Like there's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to inadvertently keep out anything. Um, and maybe this is just me being too um, anal. Uh, but those are the places that we've said you cannot smoke is just in that section, correct? Do you not, do you agree? Is in C? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, all right. I mean, I always think it's just, it's it's more helpful to be very specific about like what, what you're telling someone they can't do. So it's clear, like you can't do this. And just, I mean, it's maybe it's also like, I'm, there's no real issue there. I could just, but I, do you want me to to reference that specific section or do you want me to just use the whole depth, the general, like anywhere in this whole series of, in this organs? Or am I not making any sense? That could be too. <laughs> No, you're making sense. I think it's just the issue with it, with it is like B is just definitions. Um, and right. then C is like more specifically, like these are the areas that it's prohibited. So I think like referring directly to C is helpful. Okay. Um, and that's what I think too. I think it's helpful for anyone who has to co comply with it to know exactly. Um, I just didn't want to inadvertently leave something out by making that reference. Um, okay, so I'll just leave that. Um, let's see, my last one here. So in F, the difference between that I found, and again, this may be, you know, just semantics, but Brantwood basically said, specifically says, you can smoke anywhere else that's not listed in C, right? So they're, they're making that statement. Like if we've not listed it there, you can smoke there. Whereas this just said, just says, you know, notwithstanding anything else, the following are not subject to smoking restrictions, um, which includes just that list, right? So like if you've, if you've forgotten to put something on that list, then you're theoretically saying you can't smoke there. But um, I just didn't know if anyone had a preference between those two phrasings of how you wanted to phrase it. I just. I like the level of detail. Um, so if I'm, if I'm like, okay, does the city of Maplewood, Maplewood actively prohibit me from smoking in my own residence? Like I can go and say, oh, no, it doesn't. Um, I don't have to kind of cross check between sections of, well, I'm not this, but I could be that. So where does that leave me? I, so I like the explicit list. Um, so would you prefer, no, and that, and I, we would keep the list. I guess my question is, um, I, is that, do you also want that sentence that says, specifically says smoking shall be permitted in any and all places not specified in C and then in particular, these are, but, but not by way of limitation, these are the places that you can, or you like that, she lists so the way Brentwood does it. Okay. Because this one just says, like uh, Clayton's just said, uh, the following is where you can do it, right? But it doesn't say that you can do it anywhere else that we didn't list. Okay, so I will, I will update it to Brentwood's. Um, I, I kind of liked that better too, but. And then I just, in the next couple, I just, um, there were alternative ways of saying it in the different ones. Um, sorry, I have a cat trying to get, get in, it's gonna scare me. All right, um, 
Clayton just said private and semi-private rooms in nursing homes of which are all smokers and have all requested to be placed in a smoking room. But then the county says any facility that provides rehabilitative, restorative, and, and or ongoing skilled nursing care to patients, blah, blah, blah. But then it says, but only so long as they comply with all applicable state and federal regulations. So you guys look at number four and then what I put in the note and let me know if you have a preference between the two of how you would like that worded. I think this one is really tricky because like who actually has authority over these spaces mm -hmm. is complicated, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got the state who licensed and regulates them. And then you've got like uh, centers for Medicare, Medicaid, um, who are also involved in the regulation of them. And so it's like, we can kind of say whatever, but ultimately the final authority isn't us. Right. Um, or even the county. And this is something that we ran into with the, um, the pandemic a lot, actually. Which is probably why the counties is better, is written better because because they're saying that they're saying, you know, as long as you've complied with state and federal law, which is the point you're making, Sarah, they're all, a lot of these are subject to those because they probably, they get money from, um, so maybe use the one the county does instead. That'd be my recommendation. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was my thought as well, because the, the, the way it's written, it kind of seems to be that the, that the resident can can kind of would have the, the right to decide. Yeah. And that would be kind of force and maybe facility says, no, we don't want to have smoking <clears throat> or, yeah. or, or like <clears throat> to Sarah's point, maybe there's a, a state or figure federal regulation, <clears throat> you know, dealing with, uh, you know, no smoking in the, uh, in the establishment. So I think, you know, a lot of these we've kind of been going along, it's put on the owner of the place. So I think that would be consistent with, um, with that approach. Okay, agreed. I like that too. All right, so I'll update that. Um, and then the next one. Uh, so we have a couple questions here. We can. Um, so there were sort of different ways as they were phrased in the two. Um, and again, maybe there's, I'm trying to remember what my issue was here. We're more than 70%. I guess I liked Brentwood's because they also added that, said that like, uh, that part where it's not merely a department or subsection of a larger commercial enterprise, right? Like, so our establishment, so like the actual total establishment has to be selling tobacco, like that's their purpose. You know, they can allow smoking there, I guess, if 70%. And we can also pick the percentage, right? Like the county has 60, Clayton had 70. I think Brentwood actually had 80%. So you can per pick which percentage of sales, I guess. Um, and then the counties actually also mentioned where food is not prepared. I wonder if that's like a health code thing. They're probably covering that too. I think that's a food code thing. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know if anyone had had thoughts on that phrasing. Any preference? I don't think I could really speak to the difference between 60%, 70%, 80%. And so like in the interest of making it less complicated for people here, I would just prefer to keep the percentage the same. As the um, county? Or so as, so as what, we, what we currently have, um, which I guess ultimately is what the county has because that's kind of the overruling. Well, so they, the county has 60% and I put in 70, which is what Clayton had. So it would be, you would have to have more, I guess. So you know, that, uh, so if we, if we want to be consistent with what they're already subject to, I guess we'd have to put it 60. Um, but 
you know, our neighboring municipalities who've done this have increased it to 70 and 80. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's all that important because I think when, what you're, what these are guided towards would be, you know, cigar shops or well, I guess we have, a, there's a couple of vaping stores as well. And, you know, I think. Oh, you're all, right. All of you're those, right. all of those are going to, you You're know, right. meet that requirement e easily. And I, I can't imagine that there would be any other, you know, uh, gas station or, or convenience store or other store where, you know, the sale of or vaping products comes close to. And I, you know what, I was confusing in here bars, which would be, it's, it's actually a separate thing. That's what I was thinking about. Cause I was thinking about like, oh, that could be really dicey for a bar. You know what I mean? If they sell some food, but you're right. That was, that's under bars. So this is specifically like smoke shops. Yep. So do you want to keep it what I had in there or modify it at all? I'm, I'm fine either way. I, I, I see Sarah's point moving it to 60, but I'm fine keeping it with 70. But, you know, like I said, I think it, it, it seems to me these were, you know, guided towards cigar or smoke shops or vape shops or what have you. Do you want me to put in 60 to keep it consistent with the county? Yeah. All right. All right. So um, next would be, is that provision that um, businesses existing as of the date shall be required to comply by, I guess we just have to put a date in that is close to whenever this is passed. Like we'll have to set it, like we'll have to wait and modify that. So when you're gonna pass this, so that, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'd want Jackie to weigh in on that because yeah. I'm not sure how that usually is done. Yeah, and all right, I'll put it on the list of questions. Given. Yeah. Well, cause I also, yeah, I had a question about like, I mean, they technically should all be in compliance. So it's kind of a, a weird one anyway. So I'll put, um, I'll add that to the list. All right, and then penalty. Um, I think we're all in agreement that we don't want someone to go to jail for this. Would that be correct? Yeah. So um, we're not going to follow the Clayton structure. That's why I did not put it in. So it's tar in terms of fines, as you can see, like the, the Brentwood fines were lower than the county fines. I don't know if anyone had any thoughts on fine amounts. <clears throat> um, our, like chapter one sets an overarching fine amount and so it's like the ceiling of is like a thousand bucks per fine um and so we can set anything lower than that but i don't believe we can go higher than that no. and there's also a state provision there's state well. law too yeah. yeah yeah um so yeah i don't mind these i have a strong opinion about these amounts. Anyone else? You want to leave it at 50, 100, 200? I was fine with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so then I had a note. Oh, here is where it was. Okay, I knew there was language. So I did put a note in there at the bottom about grandfather businesses. And that's where I said, I think we would need to actually add language so that they are protected. Um, mm -hmm. And the county had this language, neither Brentwood nor Clayton did. So, I mean, maybe this is also, this is probably also a question for Jackie, like how, how to do this, but um, to make sure they're still grandfathered in. But this, I was just pointing out the language I had seen in the county ordinance that seemed to do that. And I don't think ours currently as written without any of this 
protects those previously um, grandfathered businesses, you know, unless we add some language to the to the exception section. Um, so this is where it said. Uh, that the Department of Revenue is who issues certificates of exemption to drinking establishments. So um, I thought is this particular piece, once we determine if there are any, maybe that is a question for Jackie. Would you guys agree yeah. with that? Like how yeah, we do that? Is, All right. Yeah, complicated legally. Yeah, it is complicated. All right. Right. So as far as our discussion of this ordinance, did anyone have any other questions or comments or thoughts? No? Okay. Okay, cool. I will update that um, and let you guys know when I do. All right. Um, so next, I was, I just wanted to, if it was okay, as we're trying to like sort of wrap up article one, there were a few like open items that we still had in it. And I just wanted to go through for my, so that I could know what we still had to do. Um, and I will, we can go through them and we may have to look at them on our own and then talk about them next time, but I just wanted to highlight them. Um, so the first one was section 34-3, obedience to lawful ordinances required. And so I wanted to confirm, when I look at the notes from that, sorry, I gotta go back to the, where's the, the original, the main document here, here it is. Um, we had talked about putting that in, the traffic section perhaps I think is where we landed on that, but I wanted to make sure before, before I sort of finalize that part. Um, when I look at the notes from it. We did speak with a chief about that. Um, I think that's one to, you know, at the end when we, we we go through everything, I think that's the one maybe just to leave alone for now till we, um, if we're able to sit down with the police department. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have them, you know, give give their input on that. And we can ask them like our questions about it and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's probably true then for the next two on my list, which was 34-5 interference with police officer. Yeah and resisting or interfering with arrest. Yeah. Okay. And so I wanted to let you guys know, Steph, Steph is not here, but he had sent, and I don't know if he sent it to you guys too, but he sent me an article that he had read and it was about Chicago um, updating. So, but, so this is the thing, they updated a general order. It's not an ordinance. So I, that's sort of a question for me, for the police too, that prohibits foot chases for minor offenses. Um, because of murders there were like, you know, the, the little boy, Adam, and then there was another gentleman who was, they were killed in a foot chase for like a minor offense. And so, you know, it's this idea of promoting like, and not like training officers, you're not going to get in trouble if you stop chasing someone, right? If they haven't done anything, you know, if, if, if it's a minor traffic violation, like, you know, you don't need to run after someone for that. So, it's like a shift in policy, but it wasn't in ordinance. But I'm gonna I'm gonna forward you that article because I thought it was really interesting. Um, so I think that's a good and he, you know he's like, well, this is really interesting, and I think a lot of large cities are going to that policy shift. But I think everyone should. I mean, I don't know why you'd chase someone for a minor traffic offense. So um, I will forward you guys that article just so you can have it. Um, okay, so we'll, I'll put those on the list of our questions for the police. And when we get to the end and we talk about process, we can talk about like how we want to break this up to have those conversations, because that's the main question. There's so much, but we need to figure out what makes sense. Um, all right, so then um, 
the last thing I had was from tobacco was we still needed to determine whether we wanted to keep rolling papers in. And I know you said she like, you said he didn't have it in theirs. I think some did, some didn't. Um, we can, if we have a strong preference to take it out, we can. If we wanna leave it in, we can note to the city council, like, you know, this is, I mean, the only thing you would use rolling papers for would be tobacco and marijuana, right? I mean, what else? I'm trying to think if there's some other use like a kid would have for it that you would be like, I don't want to give anyone a ticket for giving you rolling papers. But, and it's not the kid that's going to get the ticket, it's the store. So does mm -hmm. anyone have any strong thoughts about rolling papers? I would no. say just keep it in. I'm All right. All right. And then Sheila, you had found from your friend that they just do one, one fine per day. Cause that was our other question. Like <laughs> if we wanted to take out. And it was purely the, the health department that issues that fine, not the police. Okay. Um, which is still could be the case here. Um, I think, I think what ours will give is the opportunity if it's like a real problem. Um, then the police could get to it faster, it sounded like, from what you were saying, Sarah. All right, so do we just want to leave in, gosh, where is that? It's just one fine per day. Theirs was a lot higher, though, I will say. <laughs> do we want to leave it in and make it a higher fine? Say you get one fine per day or what? What do people think? But you're getting a fine from the city then. Right. So right. they're getting a fine from the health department and then the city on top of that. Not necessarily. Right, like I think you could, but I don't know. But you're right, that's a good point. I think you could get both. Could you? Kevin, that's kind of a legal question. I don't know. No, I think you, I, no, I think you can get both. Yeah, I think so be, too. All right, so we'll just- There could be county, so yeah. All right, because it's also the health department, so it's not, um, all right. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find that. So just leave it as we had it. No person shall be liable for more than one violation in a day. Is that good? Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> and then I do, I do have a list of items we have, and I've noted them in Article 1 edited, where it's something that is on our list for the city attorney or the police. So I, I um, so you can see what those are, but I have a separate list going that we can submit to them. All right, cool. So I have also just so you know started like a memorandum uh, where I'm sort of describing our process changes and stuff so we can give it to them and um, as I refine it I will share it with you guys right now it's sort of rough um, so you can add your thoughts to see if I'm wrong about you know missing anything or wrong about anything um, all right so then chapter 34 moving on to article two Woo! Um, <laughs> I spoke to, I sent you what Chief Sniper sent me. I spoke to him too. And I, I mentioned that we had talked about possibly getting rid of this. And he's like, well, this is why we like it. And he gave me an example was that they had reports of people like doing car handles, whatever. And so they went out and they found a group of kids. So that is how they were able to bring them in was because they were violating curfew. And then he also said one of them had a gun and then they discovered that there is no state law uh, that uh, has any limitation on how old you have to be to possess a gun, which is nuts. But anywho, um, so that is why they like this. He was fine like changing the time. He, he, he added that driving piece because um, you know, as, if you're a driver, a new driver, there's certain hours you can't drive between which are one and five. So he even said, you know, if you make it one, fine. Um, I would maybe do one to six, but it, we're at six already, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Maybe one to five, who cares? Um, and making them the same for every day instead of having Monday through Thursday. Um, and then uh, he also said he thinks the law just changed that it should say under the age of 18 instead of 17. Um, so, and then he, he um, offered some other cities uh, mm -hmm. 
language, which I had put some in. Let's go back to that. Let's see. What I liked about that one, I do like raising it to 18 because then you we could be setting a precedent when it when we start looking at the ordinances about child abuse. Um, and I also liked how there was wording in there about, you know, if they work a job or they're running an emergency errand for a guardian. Um, yes. I think those were two things that, that I really liked about that. And I thought you cities had, and I wanted to, I think I wanted to add this, they had a good language about there's no criminal record as a result. Absolutely. And he said that, and he said, what happens is, he goes, we don't even necessarily have to, I think he said, bring them to the station, but yeah. what, what they'll usually do is they'll like bring them in, call their parents and have their parents come get it, but come they pick do have up. to refer yeah. it to the juvenile, the county juvenile department goes, and most of those, they just like, nothing happens, right? Um, but I, I do want to make clear, like, there's no criminal element to this, like, because it's kids just breaking a curfew. All right. So I liked that too. Okay. Um, do we want to follow as far as time? Do we want to follow that, that driving thing and do it one to five? Or what do people think about that? What was that? I mean, I don't know that there's a significant difference between five and six. Um, and so if the group wants to go another way, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the more uh, pressing issue would be the, the earlier time as to when the curfew starts. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, because, uh, you know, I'm not, I would say that, <laughs> It'd be the you know whether it's midnight or one or what have you is the was probably the more relevant. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Are people good with one? Do you think it should be midnight, which is what is pretty consistent? No. Okay, I think kids can stay out. I mean, a lot of kids, especially when they're 16, 17, 18, right. well, 17. They can. I, when here's the other thing, and that I was thinking about with the, with this curfew. Uh, was the the teenagers who were asleep in the car in like was at Lake St. Louis or something once filled. And then um, they, you know, it was after curfew and, and a boy lost his life. And the police officer shot and killed him. Like I want to be very conscious about. Yeah. That, that, that just kept coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be very conscious about who this is. Yeah, not giving too much leeway. You know what I mean? To right. different entities. Because again, <laughs> you know, like we've talked about, um, you know, right now we, we have a very, yeah. We have a good police department ish i'm gonna say not ish but yeah we have a good police department but what if if the personnel changes yes you know we got to mm -hmm. be very mindful of that too yep mm -hmm. so going back to the time question 1 a.m i don't okay. think we should make it midnight or anything like that i'm with you too and I think in, in having kids that are approaching that age and like I'm talking to a friend who was like trying to explain to her teenager the current ordinance, she's like, it's so confusing. Like, and no, you, and he, you know, and they allow him to stay out on a weekend till one. And so it's like, but that would violate. And I think, I think one's good. Yeah. And I think, you know, the instances they're talking about were, and again, and I sort of was like, oh, then who are we using this against? But the instances they're talking about are like three in the morning, right? Like, and that's, no one's up to any good three in the morning. <laughs> right. There's an old right? quote that, that nothing good happens after two in the morning. You right. Know? <laughs> there you go. So, um, I do, Sheila, though, being mindful of what you said, I, I think that hopefully through some of our other ordinances, like a situation like what happened to that particular teenager or child wouldn't happen, but you're right. I mean, 
what, what, I'm just sorry. I'm just curious what happened in that situation. Like he, they were in their car sleeping and how did they end up getting shot? Like what were the series of events that. Well, it's still under investigation, but the okay. police officer reported he knocked on the door, startled the kids. And then just, I think that kid was shot like 14 times. Oh God. It was more than once. Oh yeah. God. Okay. Do you think there's anything that we could add to this to help with that or that? I, in my mind, that you know, you know, a lot of it comes down to, to training, you know, yeah. like if you, if, if there's a couple kids sleeping in a car, there's obviously more issues going on than them yeah. breaking curfew. And you would hope that the police officer would take the proper approach and, you know, engage in a way other than uh, aggressively pounding on a window or bringing them in for a curfew violation. And I think, and I think there's training in place with our that's guided towards those types of situations. And it, it's because I think, and I think those are the sort of policy things that sometimes fall under general orders. And I had a question, they're not, I don't, I couldn't find our general orders on our website. Does anyone know if they're there? I was going to ask about that. I think it would be really nice to have, to have those publicly, I mean, they're public documents um, because you know, when I was reading that article Stefan gave, like, that's a, that's a general, that's basically a general order of like how you respond to a situation. So I went to our website to see if we have them and they're not up there. So I was going to ask about that. I think, um, okay. But no one else has seen them on there. I just didn't know if I wasn't navigating the. I, I've been, hit, yeah. I don't know. I find the website a little difficult to navigate when looking for policies and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I will say the, um, I'm just doing some quick Googling, like the city of Clayton puts theirs. They do. All on right. Their website. Yeah. Okay. Like all of them. Yeah. I mean, I think they should be there. I mean, that question has come up before when I was on council about what, what's your policy about this. And, um, I think, yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask about that. Um, so one to five, we'll leave it. I think that's helpful. I also think it's helpful to match other thing, other laws that kids are sub, like people are subject to. So like, if you cannot drive a certain way from one to five, it's nice. You also know that's your curfew too. Um, so there's no disconnect. Did anyone have any other thoughts about this particular ordinance? No? So I will update it per our discussion and then let you guys know when I do that. So you can look at it and provide any comments. I think Kevin might have frozen there because he's been in that position for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see when he comes back if he has any. Okay. So then last thing, because we have 11 minutes. Ooh, ooh, look at us go, guys. This is exciting. All right, process. So I was, oh, he went away. Let's give him a second, see if he comes back, maybe. Um, well, the first one was just what I already said, is that we can always be, we, sh we can and should, I guess, always be reviewing what we've already done. If any questions come up, we can always talk about it uh, at a meeting, the next meeting. Um, let's see, process. So oh, he's still not back here. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> we had one of my daughters had a movie night last night and the internet worked perfectly the entire time uh -huh. being from outside and then I'm in the basement and it's going in and out this morning. So go uh -huh. figure. Maybe I should maybe I should have done this outside and right. Order. It's nice out there, probably, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Um, so we are to the last thing. And so process. And so I was gonna give everyone some homework for next time, which is to look at look at this chapter of the code, right? We have a lot of stuff. What we have to decide is is like we to go through the sections, I think, 
ourselves before we then can have a discussion with like the public or if or like we're doing now where if there's a particular subject matter expert, we want to provide input, like, you know, like the police or a, an attorney who specializes in an area, whoever, um, that is relevant when we're, when we are talking about it. So I was hoping we could, we could all go through and look at, at that for sort of each, each section, like who might we want to invite to the conversation when we're discussing it to get some subject matter input. And then also how looking at it as a whole, we will for sure be presenting this to the public and to the chamber and then thinking about any other groups of people we would want to present our, our versions to um, and, and timing of that, right? Like, so this is a lot and I think it's too much to do at once, <laughs> like to the public, right? Like it's too much for someone to look through all of this work that's gonna take us clearly a year to go through. So how do we break it up? What's the most efficient way to break it up and present it to people? Um, or we do do it all at once. Maybe that's the group decision. But just thinking about what makes sense for how we present it um, and in what format, right? Like, I think yeah. we can do a Zoom meeting where public can come. We can do in person. We can go to different parts of, you know, we, however that makes sense. I want people to think about that. Um, and then again, just sort of, uh, the timeline in general, like, I know we probably all don't want to be doing this for two years. So, uh, <laughs> so like I was looking at it and I think, um, I, and I'm trying to be, I was excited. I got that to six days before instead of the day before, but I'm going to try to even be better than that. Um, and get through this stuff so so we can really review it before our meetings and really come in and like get through it like we did today. Um, I think that'll help us move faster. So so if everyone's okay with that homework for next time, uh, I think that would be helpful because I know we all have a lot of questions about that. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. And so we just need to revisit that. Does anyone yeah, have thoughts now they want to share? You know, I'd say like, I don't know, I envision in my head getting everyone's opinion and like, Maybe it's uh, bring your lawn chair to the Yale green space. We're gonna just talk about, so it's not overwhelming. Like here are the changes we recommended. So you were just focusing in on changes. Okay, yep. yep. And then getting public input that way. We could do a Zoom, we could do, you know, chambers, whatever. Yeah, you know, we, like, and also event, like an event, I'm thinking like that concert, not that, but like there's one in September, right? Still, I think they do it until September, like maybe just even that where people can come by. I don't know, but that would take some planning. All right, well, we'll, we'll talk about it at our next meeting. So I like those ideas. So everyone come with your ideas and your plan um, and we'll, we'll figure something out. I think our next, we go to this. Uh, Offenses against morals is our next article. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I right away have a problem. I'm just laughing title. at that. I'm just laughing at Sarah's face. <laughs> but I've I've already no commented on city here. council oh, when no, I, no. whenever whenever morals are mentioned, I'm like, who's morality? Oh what is boy, morality, right? Like, uh, I, mean, I I vote to table that towards the end. <laughs> personally vote to just delete this section yeah, the, the prostitution yeah. part of it um uh i mean pornography you know i don't want like child pornography but like anyway there are there are many updates to be done to this if you look yeah. at even just some of the descriptive the de definitions are disturbing in there yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah so this is gonna be a fun one um and i oh and when i talked to chief niper he did agree going like section by section is easier for them. So I'm going to like, after this meeting, tell them we're doing this next, give us your input. Um, I'd be really curious if they've written any ordinance violation for prostitution. I also don't like the word prostitution. Um, so anyway. Yes, they have. They have, oh. okay, interesting, okay. interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, Do we they, they may not like my views on this section. Jenny and the cops disagree. I know, right? What? Never. Um, all right. So next time we'll we'll ta start tackling this one. Yes. 
Okay. And I had already, I had already put it on the, the main um, <clears throat> chapter uh, and I put the corresponding state statues, which I'm sure are great. Um, <laughs> but I have a feeling too, like, especially with pornography, like there's a lot of changes, like internet, like things that I've seen in other ones, like ours are so outdated, you know, um, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So, yeah. all right. Uh, when, when do we want to do this? That's always the big question. So the only weekend I'm unavailable in September is the weekend of the 24th. And I will be out of town walking 50 miles in a weekend, the 9th through the 11th, like the 10th, I'll be gone. Um, and I have something every Saturday. Okay. And yeah, I'm okay. I, and, and like, I you got I'm soccer. Yeah, I coach. I, I coach yeah. soccer. Um, the schedule has not come out yet, um, so it's just. I'm okay. Yeah. We're like meeting like maybe after five, or that's fine with me. I, I during don't the weekday that. during the weeks. Yeah, weekday. yeah. Maybe I'm good with that too. I make a doodle pool and we all yeah. take it, and I'll put like a please take this by X date for the month yeah. of yeah. September. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Sarah, because you know I do not know how to do that. So thank you. <laughs> well, you've done a lot of work, Jenny. A yeah. Lot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I, I enjoy this. Welcome. I enjoy this. This is what I'd love to do for my job if I could, but um, I'm in, I like it. It is, it is work though. And I'm trying to be better about procrastinating because I am also an expert procrastinator. So <laughs> feel free to guilt me into providing information to you faster. I'm motivated by that. <laughs> I had Karen do that on our other one. I was like, Karen, just keep texting me, asking me when I've done it. She's like, but no, I don't want. I was like, no, please, because then I'll do it. Um, all right. So Sarah will send that doodle poll. I will send um, out uh, <clears throat> the minutes. And then um, I will catch Stefan up. I told him I'd call him. I think it's going to be easier to catch him up sort of on what we talked about and our homework for next time. And then I will update what we went through today. And I'm gonna do some research on this next one. So if I find anything good, I'll add it to that Google Doc, just about modifying and updating, especially mm. when it comes to sex work. So Toronto, uh, oh, yeah. Toronto, Canada, if sex work is legalized, I think it's even unionized Ooh. and Ooh. there's healthcare. Um, so it's very sex positive. Mm -hmm. um, St. Louis in 1870 had uh, uh, health checks for uh, for okay. sex workers. Interesting. Because, yeah, and then that went away uh, after a few years. The state stepped in and stopped it. Interesting side note, but right. So there's but, a history yeah. of that, huh? <laughs> but like on the flip side, you know, 7100 block, you know it's yeah. better so much better but you but know that used to be a oh my god yeah and so with that brought in another element and it was usually um oh, i can't cuss on here can i <laughs> it was it was usually men were the problem we'll just say men were the problem okay. that was the other element that was was brought into yeah. that and it was not like this liberating thing. It was exploitation. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, uh, yes. Yeah. The problem is, tra is the trafficking element that yes. comes in. Yeah. So when we had that like really big pros prostitution presence, um, I never said anything to the ladies. It was always the men, you know, because um, they were, they were the problem. Uh, so I don't want to see that come back either. Well, and I guess, and I too, you know, when we're talking about this, it is illegal under state law. So like, we can't change that. So it would really just be a distinction of whether our police could write a municipal violation or a state violation. And then it's like, what's the penalty? Like, is it worse for a sex worker if they're getting a state ticket and, as opposed to municipal, right? Like, I mean, is there like a worse penalty? I mean, I think that's what we're going to end up getting into because we can't change the state law. Um, yeah. And we know that's not going to change anytime soon. 
what so. happened real, I know we have to go but what happened real quick um I know the ACLU got involved and we changed uh ordinances about how many you know especially with DV victims about yeah. how many times the police is, but there isn't there still something that says there can be a six-month ban on an individual in Maplewood if so yeah so I that so that's in our chapter that's one of the primary reasons I chose this chapter because I would like to get rid of the occupancy permit. It's it's your occupancy permit. That's how you're going to ban. And that's what I want to get rid of because I don't think anyone violating a municipal code should lose their right to live here. But anyway, I don't I don't think there's just like a ban for a person. It's just living here. We did have a ban for a person for six months. And really? It was, yes. And it was so welcomed. Oh, so look, maybe there, maybe there is something. I just don't remember it being, I thought it was just the occupancy permit. <clears throat> Everyone had a sigh of relief for six months. This guy was terrible, horrible, assaultive. I mean, just horrible. Well, maybe there was a restraining order in that, in, in the, it included such a large area. No. All right. Mm -mm. Um, there yeah, were I think orders against him. They just didn't work. <laughs> Piece of paper. Right, correct. Yeah. That's the other problem. Yes. Um. I, yeah. I think this is a really. This is going to be a really interesting topic. I. I started trying to research to see Sarah. I know you have to go. Sorry. You feel free to. They're fine. Um. But I. I was trying to find if there were like updated ordinances to, to be more po like positive or modern about sex work and stuff. And I, I didn't find anything. Um. So I'll just keep looking. But yeah, it's a real interesting topic because there are two sides to it, right? Like. There is, yes, you're you're raising the side that is the reason you would want something like this. It's also a protective factor for yeah. Women. You don't want to you don't want to penalize the sex worker, but you don't want to incentivize people who are right. exploiting. Correct. You know. Yes. So okay. Well, yeah, this will be a interesting one. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you right. guys.